What do you think about politics? Welcome to the first Trust Vote Report. I'm Dr. Bob Fitrakis. With so many election issues in the news, I'm striving to bring you different facts uh, and a different analysis than you're used to in the mainstream media. On Wednesday, January 10th, the Supreme Court of the United States heard arguments against the law in my state of Ohio, a law that makes it very easy to deregister voters, to purge them from the voting rolls because they haven't voted in a few elections. Now, in order to understand this issue, let's take a look at one of the co-founders of the moral majority, Paul Weyrich, and see what he has to say about his commitment to voter rights. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Now, it seems that certain elements in this country are simply resorting or falling back to a longstanding practice to keep poor people and people of color and new immigrants from voting. Uh, with that in mind, let's analyze what happened at the Supreme Court. And here I'll uh, have the assistance of the New York Times, the so-called paper of record. Now, what's at issue here, again, is the purging of the voting rolls. People have complained in Ohio and in other states as well, but particularly Ohio, which I think the New York Times correctly uh, tells us is one of the most difficult states to vote in. So here's what's happening. You show up at the polls, your name's missing. Some private company like Triad or ESNS, or in the old days, the infamous Debolt has removed your name, so you can't vote. So uh, Ohio has been kicking people off the voting rolls in record numbers. One of the Supreme Court justices, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, uh, the first Latina to ever serve on the court, raised the key issue that quote, all of these impediments result in large numbers of people not voting in certain parts of the state. She is being very cautious. What she's referring to is they're purging inner city voters. They're purging black voters. They're purging Latino, Hispanic voters, and they're purging poor voters. Uh, and as we look at the facts, uh, we can prove that. For example, uh, I'm the editor of the Columbus Free Press and the freepress.org. Uh, we also have a uh, book company we put out, Columbus Institute for Contemporary Journalism, as goes Ohio election theft since 2004. So in 2004, we, we wrote uh, a few books regarding that election we believe was stolen. We kept track after that. Uh, and you'll see that in the 2004 election, 308,000 voters in three counties, that is Cuyahoga, where Cleveland is, Cincinnati, which is in Hamilton County, and Toledo and Lucas County, 308,000 voters were purged from the voting rolls. This is the main reason that George W. Bush won the state by 118,000 votes. This was targeting. It's the type of targeting that Paul Weyrick is talking about, that his good right-wing Christians are about. They're about purging people 
that are most likely to vote Democratic. And in the 2004 election in Ohio, 95% of African Americans voted for John Kerry, the Democratic candidate. So they're systematically purging progressive voters, people of color. Now, if we go farther, this has continued for a long period of time. Uh, here's another book we've done, Corporate Vote Theft and the Future of American Democracy. Uh, what we did, and this is part of investigative uh, reporting, in 2005, the Free Press managed to get a hold of the public records in Ohio, which gave us the name of every single voter purged in the state. So now what we found is not only did they purge 305,000 voters, overwhelmingly African Americans and poor people in the inner cities in the run up to the 2004 election, they also purged 1.1 million voters between 2008 and 2012. So what they also did was between 2004 and 2008, they purged 1.25 million voters. And these voters, of course, were overwhelmingly black, Latino, poor, people of color. And then between the 2008 and 2012 election, they purged an additional 1.1 million voters. So what they're trying to do here, of course, is to make sure that the voter rows are shrunk, that as many people of color as possible, as many poor people are stripped from the voting rolls. In part why we wrote, uh, and I'm referring here to my co-author, Harvey Wasserman, the strip and flip disaster of America's stolen election. Uh, this is the 2016 election. So let me uh, read you one brief paragraph from this book. And this is about the stripping involved in the strip and flip. On April 15, 2012, the Free Press obtained public records from all 88 county boards of elections. It documented 1,092,000 voters were removed from voting rolls since the previous presidential election in 2008. In Cuyahoga County, where the city of Cleveland lies, 267,071 people lost their right to vote. They were deleted from the voting rolls that are held on the computer. They were stripped of their right to vote. In Franklin County, here where I live in Columbus, 93,578 voters were deregistered. So Franklin County voted 58% for Obama. Overwhelmingly, the people removed were from the inner city precincts from the majority black precincts. Now, here's a curious thing. When we got these public records for predominantly lily white counties in rural Ohio, Hancock, Huron, Sandusky, and Wood County reported to us that they didn't purge a single voter. So go back to Paul Wayrick, right? Purge the urban areas where black people and Hispanics and poor people live, but don't purge the all white rural Ohio counties. And that's what's at stake here. Who gets purged and why? And we're gonna ask you a key question uh, right now. Why should anybody be purged from the voting rolls in a computer era? Right? Their name's on the computer. And we're an ID state. You're required to bring ID to the polls. So why wouldn't you leave them on the computer? Maybe star them, say they've been inactive. 
They've got to provide ID anywhere as to where they live. They've got to provide ID anyway as to where they live. Why wouldn't you leave them on the computer and ask them when they show up with their ID so you can update their data? Why would you take away their right to vote? That's what undemocratic societies do. That's what we accuse China of, Putin or North Korea. Why are you stripping the basic fundamental right to vote from American citizens? Makes no sense. What, there's no room on the computer? Have you ever heard of a hard drive? Why would you be taking their vote away other than to follow the wishes of a far right winger like Paul Weyrich that wants to make sure reactionary white forces can win in this country by stripping the votes from the urban, more diverse voters. Now, let me go forward and do some analysis here in the Supreme Court. I've talked a little already. These impediments referred to by Sotomayor, you're making it difficult for people in urban areas, elderly who tend to vote Democratic, young people who tend to vote Democratic, poor people who tend to vote Democratic, Blacks, Asians, Hispanics, all of them are targeted and they're the ones whose votes are deregistered. Now, here's Justice Kennedy according to the New York Times. Kennedy opines, they want to protect the voter rolls from people that have moved. Well, have you ever heard of the post office, Justice Kennedy? Why don't you link, here's a shocker, like every other advanced society in the world, including the European Union, link the post office, the change of address to the voter rolls, so you'll know exactly. So they're not when we studied over a million people, 32,000 had moved. You purged a million people, deregistered them, stripped them of their rights. So you could find 32,000 people who had moved when all you had to do is link to the correct database. Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Not a deep issue, Justice Kennedy. Well, what about Justice Breyer? Here's what he said. We don't want them on the voter roll. They, that used to be a big problem voting dead people. Okay, Justice Breyer, you ever heard of the county recorder's office? Link the database to the county recorder's office that keeps track of dead people. Easy solution. Why are you suggesting that there has to be mass purges when there's easy solutions to all of this. We could be like the European Union. We could simply say, it shall be the duty of the state to register its citizens to vote. Why make it difficult when it's easy? And here's the interesting part of this. Uh, we should give some credit to Chief Justice John G. Roberts, uh, who seemed shocked at the oral hearings when it dawned on him, they are purging voters because they didn't vote in a previous election. He says, quote, so the triggering event can be the failure to vote. In quote. I would have thought that's inconsistent with the rest of your argument. He meant the argument by the state of Ohio. We have to look for people that are moving or dead people. But the state of Ohio admits we're going after these people because they didn't vote in the last couple elections. Since when do you lose your constitutional right to vote or for free speech because you haven't done it in a few years? It's absurd. They're targeting people. The reality is Republicans vote more often than Democrats, but there's more Democrats. So for the far right Republicans to remain competitive, they've resorted to stripping the voter rolls. Remember Diebold in the run-up to the 2004 election, accidentally they claimed 
purge 10,000 voters, where in Cleveland that have voted 81% for John Kerry. So that happens over and over again. They purged 175,000 voters in Cleveland. That's right, 24.96% of every voter in that city was purged prior to the 2004 election. Now, in this situation, uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, Congress didn't want failure to vote to be a trigger for this procedure. They're targeting people who don't vote. But you have a right to vote, you have a right not to vote. This is the United States. All of these problems are easily solvable. But the key question you need to ask everyone, why in a computer era are you purging people in a state that requires ID? Why are you deregistering them as opposed to leaving their names on the ballot and requiring them to produce ID to show where they live? That's the question. Fight for the right for the American people to vote, even in Ohio. I'm Dr. Bob Fetrakis, bringing you the Trust Vote Report.